Let's recover the Ben Shapiro thingy here. Um, liberal student challenges Shapiro on systemic racism debate. Apparently, he was very nice and cordial during this debate, so everyone in the comments is kind of fucking with that instead of, like, the actual stuff, so I have to watch it to see what the fuck is going on. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to be Pause Champ Supreme, so if you're watching this on YouTube, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit the subscribe to stay notified. This channel does upload daily, I've just been really shittily depressed, so if you're watching this one, it's probably at a time where shit is being uploaded, so... We're almost to 100 subscribers. Let's get it. We're trying to get to 1K by the end of uh, the year, so let's do something. I'm definitely a left-leaning student, um, but I listen to your podcast every day. Well, thank you for coming uh, and thank you for listening. I appreciate it. Thank Take you, thank guts. you. Uh, so my question uh, is about race and culture. Uh, so while I agree with you that when you look at white America, it's silly to say that the majority of white Americans are actively trying to prevent you from getting to where you want to be. Uh, I'm East Indian, and I have definitely experienced some racism, but I never felt as though it keeps Indians from succeeding. So I do think there's a cultural component that supersedes the color of your skin. But I also think that it's naive to say that it just so happens that the same minority groups that have been historically oppressed happen to have cultures that are less conducive to success. Uh, I believe that environment can create culture. Uh, can you acknowledge the historical reasonings that led that these so-called unsuccessful cultures uh, and not put blame on these minority groups? Uh, I know that in your heart, I don't think you're a racist person, uh, but in my, in my opinion, uh, to blame people for their, failure, for their cultural failures without taking into consider in historical, uh, the history in general conceals a lack of empathy and sort of hints at racism. Okay, so... Okay, before he fucking replies, that was, that, that's such an excellent way to put it. I, and I think I've said this on stream before. I'm not judging you, I'm not judging your character by what you say. But what you say leads me to believe that your character endorses these type of thoughts. And the people who endorse these type of thoughts generally are a certain type of people. So I'm glad he put that out there. That's a great start to this. Awesome. I, I can't wait to see where this goes. I'll fight back on the last point that, that, you know, there's anything to do with empathy or racism here. Um, but I fully agree with you. Like 100, not, not like 90%, like 100%. I think that bad cultures are generally the result of bad things that have happened in the past or bad modes of thought that have prevailed over time. So, for example, uh, there's a, a great book by Thomas Sowell uh, called... Uh, Stop quoting black conservatives! I fucking... Oh my god, I literally dove into this shit already! Now, obviously, Ben Shapiro does not know me, but like... It, see, now it makes me, it, I know as he talks, I'm going to have to repeat myself. And I hate doing that because like, even though new people might see this, it's like, I really want to move on. But the culture war is the dominant theory here. And, oh God, just stop quoting Thomas Sowell. Please, please. You don't know the type of people who use Thomas Sowell's words to just say black people are at fault for everything that they've ever gone through, including slavery black rednecks and white liberals uh, and that book essentially suggests that a lot of the, path uh, the pathologies that exist about single motherhood for example in the black community or high rates of violence are actually outgrowths of a slave and post-slave culture that was imposed by a white society that didn't bother with policing, that didn't in, that didn't care about inculcating morals or virtues in in slaves. Obviously, they actually actively fought against it because they didn't want that to happen. Um, and so there was an active fight from assimil uh, against assimilation by white people, and that created a, an underground culture that's really bad, and that exists in parts of white America too. It exists in Appalachia. So. Yes, I, I think bad cultures have nothing to do with race. Uh, I don't think that just because, the, this is why I'm saying I don't know why it borders on racism to say the cultures are bad. Like some cultures are bad, some cultures are good, and that has nothing to do with race. Charles Murray wrote an entire book called Coming Apart about pathologies in white communities uh, that, that are really destructive. So bad cultures do arise very often from historical circumstances, including historical discrimination. What I say... Okay, he's not insanely wrong. There was some parts, I knew you could see it on my face, where I was just like, uh, but in a debate stage, this would be fine rhetoric. Okay, this is fine rhetoric. First time ever I don't have to jump down Ben Shapiro's throat, which is great, because I've been saying forever, I, I genuinely think he takes up the majority of these issues for the grift. He doesn't truly believe in those things in public. The way he's acting right now in public is way different than he would be if this were a segment on his show is that today there's nothing preventing an individual from superseding the culture in which you grew up and making good decisions. That's not true. That's not true. He's going to explain it, so hopefully I'm going to try to beat him to the punch here, but that's not true because it's culture tied in with environment. And that type of thought process 
only exist in destabilized racial societies. Now, you might say, well, a lot of the earth is a destabilized racial society. Exactly. Exactly. Because throughout human history, we keep somehow revolving around oppressors and the oppressed. Then the op oppressed uprise, and so the cycle continues. The problem with thinking like this, that there is... Whoops, I didn't mean to fo uh, forward. Um, the problem with things like this is... You got to be on the streets for this for this answer. So this might not make sense to a lot of people. But what I've always said is there is nothing stopping you from overcoming your racial and environmental backgrounds. However, what's missing from that is the context of the opportunities that are given to certain people or certain races or certain communities based on how that community is responding to its environmental factors. In other words, and I've said this, I'll make it personal about me to make it easier for everybody to understand. I could have wanted to be a hockey player. There are no rinks here. There's two. They cost money. They cost time. I'd have to buy the, 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 the ice skates. I'd obviously have to spend time practicing. I'd have to spend time, you know, getting on the ice. Can't do that when you're poor. You need to focus on school and getting home in time so you can figure out where your next meal is coming from. You're probably hungry from the day. You don't want to go out and you don't have the money to afford hockey lessons. You don't have the money to afford hockey gear. So that perpetuates a cycle of things that you cannot equip yourself to do until you are later on in life. And by that time later on in life, if that same situation has been happening to you repeatedly over and over and over again, what ends up happening is, is you don't look out for these opportunities because you don't have the time to. I need to pay for rent. Uh, God forbid, you know, you have a child early. I got to focus on my child. There's... There's a difference between somebody having enough money to be able to sploof and say, I want to be an architect and take two years of classes and then get nowhere with it. I, I wanted to be an architect, but like there were no opportunities out there for me after I got the degree or after I took the classes. There's no time for me to be able to sit on the Internet, even though I'm literally streaming now. There's no time for me to sit on the Internet and take these classes on construction or this or that. I'm worried about making fucking money so that way I can keep my rent. When you don't have the ability to take a breather and do something because you like it, that is generally because of your environmental stand, uh, uh, stance in living, the, your, your factors of environmental living. When you tie those environmental factors into what might be considered as racial issues, systemically racist issues that have kept you, your family, your past generations from accruing wealth, you cannot expect those same people to be at the same level or same point as anyone else who already had those advantages. I will never drive a yacht. I, that's a lie. I might. But to get to that point is a lot harder than, the, than this 14-year-old uh, boy from down south who... who, who or Florida, who literally lives with his dad who has a boat crew. And they just have a boat crew because they're near water. And that's what people around there do. So when he wants to drive a yacht, oh, my dad knows that other guy who owns that country club. And he was like, you know what? I normally don't let kids do this, but you know what? Fuck it. We're off the we're off the sizzy. We we smoke some reefer. <laughs> just go nuts. Here's how you drive it. Here's how you clutch it. Like, come on. It exists in the black community, uh, black inner city community of high rates of single motherhood and violence, for example. Um, or I, mean, I don't care if you want to if you want to say that that the pathology that exists in the black community, uh, black inner city community of high rates of single motherhood and violence, for example, um, or lack of institutional wealth. Uh, that that is a result of, of historic racism, I'm fine with you saying that. I don't have any problem with that. I'm not talking about historical racism when I talk about white privilege. I'm talking about right now the idea that there's a superstructure of rules and laws that are preventing you from succeeding or a culture that is trying to keep you down. I don't think that's the case. So the question becomes... Okay, this is the debate. I've been finally looking for a right winger to say this shit out loud in a perfect sentence for me to shut it down or to be able to actually have a reasonable debate on it. He's talking about active suppression. That doesn't exist because the culture that we live in does not allow for the fomented active uh, suppression of black people. We can talk about other minorities in a better, longer winded uh, segment. But for right now, he's talking about active suppression. That's why most people don't 
see anything wrong with that statement. Uh Active suppression is not the issue. It's the ingrained way we view uh, names, jobs, hairstyles, etc. that perpetuates that system at a level just low enough that you can hide behind it. Does that make sense? It's not active, it's passive. If you are here, let's say let's say that on average, the culture in white America, uh, or with regard to single motherhood, to take an example, uh, is is here, right? Because why well, he's going to use my example? If he uses my example to the T, but uses it to prove his point, now you can see how why I don't like him, or why I'm able to say, yeah, in a debate, I would easily kill Ben Shapiro. If he uses my exact same example, me, lonely fucking YouTube Twitch streamer with. 0.001% of his following. If he uses my exact, let's just watch. Less single motherhood in the white community than the black community. And in the black community, it's, it's here because it's 70% single motherhood rate and the white community is 40%. Okay, so the question is, before, thanks to racism and thanks to discrimination, there was a cap on the black community that was here and they couldn't get past it. Okay, now the, the ceiling's been removed. So what do you as an individual black person do to change your life? And I See, active, right? What do you as a black person do to change your life? You can make any decisions you want. You don't have to fall into the same patterns of what the physical cap was left. You keep talking about the physical cap as though it was so long ago. That cap never got removed. They changed the standards around which the conversation, oops, in which, in which around the conversation revolves. So anybody can make the choices that they want, but they still will run into remnants of that old system that are active. So they have to get past the passive to get to the active. And when you get to the active, you're probably at a high enough level where if you speak out about it, they'll call you a fucking liar. Or if you're able to prove it, it doesn't do enough damage to the people who are perpetuating this against you for it to actually matter. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I don't think it's helpful. And in fact, I think it's actually quite hurtful to spend an enormous amount of time talking about the legacy of discrimination and racism instead of talking about what can you do right now to fix your problem. You know, this is a general issue that I have in all of my relationships. My, when my wife comes to me and she says, there's a problem in my life, before we even have the conversation, I say to her, is this a listening conversation or is this a you want me to fix it conversation? <laughs> and I think that when it comes to- uh, Why would you ever ask your wife that? You want me to just hear you vent or do you want me to help you fix the problem? Why don't you just listen to her and then have an input? Touch grass! You see what I mean about touch grass? Like, touch grass! Politics, there should be far fewer listening conversations. Like, I want you to tell me about all the crap that's happening to you, because I don't care. I mean, I care, but it doesn't, but now the question is, what are you going to do? Right? That's a much more important conversation, because we only have five minutes together. Is that five minutes going to be spent on all the terrible things that happened, which I fully agree with, that I, I would have fought if I were there, but I wasn't? Right? Are we going to spend five minutes talking about all the terrible things that happened to blacks and Jews and gays and women and, and Hispanics in, in the United States? Or are we going to talk about right now what you can do to succeed? Because I don't think that the rules are holding you back. So I've That's fine. That's fine. This is going to go to a point Vosh uh, got angrily mad at one point, and I'm going to echo that point here. Um, white people don't have a great outlook on, on that conversation. Now, Vosh takes the opposite stance here, so I'm not going to be uh, putting them both in the same camp. That's miserable. But you see how being white leads you to not have the full depth of understanding of what it's like to be that person because you and me the the white kid across the, the the camera from me there's nobody there but the white kid across the camera from me and me could have grown up in the same neighborhood matter of fact why am i even trying to pretend there's somebody there i literally grew up with people who were white passing white identifying like irish blah 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 and they grew up in the same hood as me and even they had to come back and be like yo i used to use the n-word because you know i grew up here and that's just the word we use like but I don't really feel like that's like my position to do anymore. Growth, excellent. You and me come from the same struggle, but there are still elements to that struggle that you just will not deal with as you grow older, as you go out into society. That's fine. My issue is we need to fix those. For some reason, I can't fix it right now because every time I try to fix it right now, people bring up personal choice. Well, what decisions can you make to make your life better? To which I have to tell you, there are a group of people who learned a set of rules from other people. And even though those rules were uh, 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 thrown out, they still got the opinions and life ideologies that they share with their children and their friends from that time. 
that's what that's why the conversation keeps going back to the 1619 project the uh the uh, critical race theory all of that being able to view things in a way that is healthier as opposed to uh just saying okay all of that happened in the past now what because we're not having that conversation with people who are already on top they don't change it they abuse the system I've never, ever at any point suggested that there's not been historic discrimination against black people or even that current day poverty is at least in part an outgrowth of that historic discrimination. What I have suggested is that if you are using that historic discrimination as a reason why you are not, as an individual human being, becoming more income mobile and not making good decisions, no one is making the call for you right now as an individual to get that girl pregnant. And yeah, there it is. Now you say, well, he, he's right. He is right. But with critical race theory i'm being funny here it's not this isn't what i would what critical race theory would propose but from like what i know about you and the people you speak with and how they talk it is very ironic that you chose to end your statement with nobody's telling you to get that girl pregnant because it's funny that i've heard a bunch of sheriffs i heard a bunch of gop members i've heard a bunch of white people say all black people do is have 10 kids and live off welfare see now, you could say he made that statement tongue in cheek, but however, think about it. Put a little thought in there. And that's that's the argument that I'm making. Can I, can I say sure. Yeah. Um, so I guess like would you like so don't, would you, would you have to admit, though, that between different races and different cultures, there are there are different levels of success. And there's definitely you would expect that somebody who grows up with with uh, with a less with being able less to succeed, you you would you would expect that that would happen in certain in certain communities and certain right. That's why they're called pathologies of culture. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if if you grew up in a worse situation than somebody else who grew up in a better situation, of course you're going to grow up having obstacles that that other person has to overcome. But that doesn't mean that that other person number one victimized you. Right? There's no one in America today, for example, who's enslaved a black person that I know of, or if they have, they'd be in jail. Um, I'm sure that nobody- Wow, it's crazy because that actually did fucking happen. <laughs> it's crazy because that did fucking happen. Uh, it's crazy because that did fucking happen. And he got in prison. But how long was it? A 10-year sentence for uh, unpaid 100-hour uh, weeks uh, should get double. He was paid until Smith, who had an IQ. That's such a weird IQ of 70. Started First started work at the Conway Restaurant in 1990 at 12 years old. He was paid until September 2009, so he worked there for 19 years. When Edwards took over and moved Smith into an apartment attached to the restaurant, uh, Edwards forced Smith to work from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Friday and 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. on weekends with no days off. Uh, once identified, uh, yeah, Edwards whipped Smith uh, with a belt, beat him with pans and punched him. Uh, yeah, then he like dipped metal tongs in the hot grease and pressed them to Jack's neck. Uh, felt like it was a prison. I felt most of the time I felt unsafe, like Bobby could kill me if he wanted to. So it's funny he brought that up that like nobody I know and if they did, they were in jail, but they still did it. You see that? Remember how we were like slavery was uh, uh, made illegal a hundred years later, uh, almost 65, 95, almost 160, 70 years later. Still here. Even if it's one person, that means that ideology has not been snuffed out. It still exists and is still somehow echoed in society. In this room, right, none of the young white people in this room were alive during the times of Jim Crow. So the right. But they learn from their parents certain uh, uh, ideologies that might echo Jim Crow. You might say, well, of course they wouldn't be in support of that, but then you'd have to wonder why were the people who were there in support of it? And what did they teach their children? The question is, do we take away from the white people in this room to rectify historic injustices, or do we recognize that history is filled with historic injustices, and now we're going to have to find a way to overcome those obstacles together without redistributing income, for example? Now, I have called for movements, for example, for, uh, for companies to go into inner cities and make a deal with students in inner cities and say to them, listen, you get good grades, and we'll pay for your college, and then you come afterward and you work for us for three years to pay off that debt. Like, I think uh, Living wage, but it's still not a – it's still, you know – a good idea you know it's that's 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 cool if you're if it's a good corporation that pays a good amount of money uh, I'll pay for your schooling let's say your schooling costs 
uh, over the course of four years, t- we're being so fucking kind and generous with this number. Uh, let's say it costs 50000 at the end of it. Like, let's say you're in an inner city school or whatever. You can live at home, blah, blah. And when you finish, you'll come work for us. And let's say I make six to 8000 a month. They take $1,000 out. Sure. Okay. I think there are things that we can do in the private sector. This is why I think religious communities are so important. I'm not against charity. I'm not against us as individuals going out and helping people. What I am against is the idea that the government can fix this problem because the government cannot fix historic inequity. All that the government can do is set the rules at, at an equal level, equal law, uh, equal, you know, equal judgment under law, equal justice under law is the only way that we're ever going to approach anything that looks like a fair society. There's no such thing as a fair society where the government plays God and gives some to others and takes from others. So, uh, you- uh, money is not a real thing. Just give, uh, just give everybody like a good 150, 160 grand. Let them buy houses, cars, let them build equity. Let like you like. I get it, but you really got to start. The government's not going to fix the problem. The government needs to ease the entryway to monetary success. And that needs to be done through higher wages, uh, better home ownership options. He's right about the... I, see, see, this is the Ben Shapiro that I need to see. Like, this is the Ben Shapiro that talks and doesn't say wild dumb shit. I can debate him on a, on a smooth level here. But what he says on in the other shits, like, nah. Would you say that you basically we should like other people who are not, you know, in, in an oppressed state, they should they should wait and wait for other people to pull themselves up. Uh, do you think that's how we should solve it? Or do you think there is a more? I think every culture in American history, every individual in American history who has succeeded has had a combination of people who help them out, not in the government, people who help them out and their own capacity to, to bootstrap it. That's not true because then we'd have to talk about redlining the creation of cities, uh, urban cities. We'd have to talk about poor housing standards. We'd have to talk about the FD, um, the FDA. We'd have to talk about uh, uh, HHS. We'd have to talk about uh, HPD. Um, way too much. And when my great grandparents got here, they were dirt poor and didn't speak English. Uh, great great grandparents got here they're dirt poor and didn't speak english this is true for virtually everybody in the room right at some point somebody came over here and they were dirt poor and didn't speak english uh and that doesn't mean that on a generational level people are going to go from from zero to a hundred um but it does mean that we're going to need to move in the right direction as opposed to sitting around and talking about historic injustice all day because that doesn't get anything done yeah okay so my i i was going to cover this sorry let me not let me um my final takeaway on that 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 was a nice segment that was it. That was that was nice. I still think he's wrong on a few things, but like he's not saying it in a way where it's like outlandishly fucking stupid. And this is the Ben Shapiro that needs to be out more on his own show.